Hi, this is Michael Orl from MobileBurn.com, and today I have with me the Samsung Galaxy S2. It's a dual-core 1.2 gigahertz Android gingerbread smartphone with a 4.3-inch Super AMOLED Plus display, and it's available now in the UK. Let's pull the Galaxy S2 out of the box and take a look at it. There is the phone itself, very thin, powered up. Let's see what else we've got in here. Looks like a quick start guide, probably some warranty information. Micro USB to USB cable. UK charger. This is obviously an EU unit. Here's a set of nice stereo earbuds with uh, chrome highlights on them. Call send in button here. And looks like we've got a couple of extra earbud covers right here. Samsung already installed a SIM card in the battery, so that's it. So here is the Samsung Galaxy S2 started up. It is big, bad, and gorgeous. It is a 4.3 inch Super AMOLED Plus display. That is 480 by 800 pixels across. Uh, Super AMOLED Plus is the latest version of Samsung's uh, AMOLED displays and it's really brilliant. And we'll do some comparisons a little bit later, but take a look at how thin this phone is. Um, 8.5 millimeters. This is a really slim, high power smartphone. Right here on the left hand edge we've got the volume control. Up top not too much to see apart from the 3.5mm headphone jack. The power standby button over here on the right hand edge. There's a little bit of a bulge down at the bottom and uh, there's a micro USB connector as well right there. On the back of the phone it's an 8 megapixel camera with a LED flash there. On the front of the device, I'll turn off the display, make it a little easier to see. On the front of the device, we've got a 2 megapixel forward facing camera for video chat, and this is an Android 2.3.3 device, Gingerbread. So, as soon as it gets the update to 2.3.4, it should be able to do Google Talk video chat. Uh, large display, as I pointed out, and then you can see there's actually a hardware button down here, a little bit of a departure. That's the home button. I'll reactivate the device. So you can see that that's the menu button and there's the back button. There's no search button on this at all. I'm going to pull off the rear cover here so we can take a look at what lies within. Here's the battery. If I can manage to pull that out. You can see it's a 1650 milliamp hour battery and there's the SIM card slot right there. HSPA Plus device, so you have up to, up to 21 megabits per second download speeds. Micro SD memory card augments the 16 or 32 gig of internal storage you'll find on the phone, depending on which version you get. So what's really cool is that in spite of the large battery and the big display and everything like that, the device still only weighs 116 grams, which is really, really nice. Here you can see uh, the text messaging system. I got to this just by swiping directly from the messaging icon on the lock screen so you can jump directly to the appropriate application for notifications. Back to the home screen. Unlike uh, some of the other devices we've seen from Samsung, this is uh, running TouchWiz 4 and uh, the default home screen is all the way to the left. They've changed the order a bit. You can of course go into edit mode and rearrange things as you like. Likewise, very flexible main menu system. A little bit more so than what we saw in TouchWiz 3. Of course we have a list view. But if we go back to the grid view and go into edit, you can see we now have access to folders. you can see that I can grab a few items here. I'm going to grab some benchmarks. I just happen to be sitting here. 
and I'm going to put them into a new folder. You can see they've been moved from the old benchmarks into this new one. I can rename it, of course. This is the Samsung keyboard with uh, XT9 support, and I'll show you some of the features of that a little bit later. There's our new folder. You can uninstall applications and remove folders quite easily just by tapping on them when they've been installed. All these are pre-installed though, so you can't do that there. Now, of course, I can still rearrange things to the way I like just by dragging them around. You can also drag them onto new pages. Um, you can do just about anything. It takes some work to get things organized the way you want, and um, new apps come into the end if there's no space prior, so it can be a little hard to maintain, but I really like the flexibility it offers. The add function has been reorganized a bit too. You can easily move from screen to screen and decide what you want to do. Pick from a number of nice widgets. Move on. Install a couple more. And then when you're done, hit the back button. Very easy to organize. See a lot more settings than you would get with the normal Android power control widget. A lot of really nice looking stuff too. I'm very fond of the agenda calendar view. Of course you can do a pinch gesture to jump back and forth or whenever you're in another home screen you just press home and it'll take you back to the primary one. Pull down the notification area you can see there's some shortcuts across the top as well. I've got new voicemail and I've got some new unread messages. I'll just tap there and go back into the messaging app and show you this. Looks very much like what we've seen in other uh, recent Samsung devices. Uh, you'll have to forgive the lack of connectivity. Um, sitting on a condo on a beach and the signal's really really weak here. I've had trouble with just about every phone I have on T-Mobile so this is an EU device so even though I'm on T-Mobile there's still not going to be any 3G connectivity it's just edge. In any case you can see some of them gone out. Nice threaded view easy to see which message is coming from which party. Let's show you some of the uh, text input options here. Now this is also swipe pre-installed but this is the default Samsung keyboard. find it to be pretty nice. There's autocorrect and word completion options. Um, one thing that seems to be lacking, I haven't seen a setting for at least, is double spacing to get a full stop or a period. But I do like that it has a Blackberry-like ability to autofix uh, a lot of common words. So um, say ain't, it'll automatically put the apostrophe in there. If I go into settings, you can take a look at some of these options. You can see the XT9 auto substitution list. Quite long. All sorts of things that it'll fix automatically in your own word list. A lot of options. Seems to work pretty well for me. Haven't had um, too much chance to use it though. Let's take a look at the selection of wallpapers that are included and notice how quickly everything responds and how smooth all the animations are. Uh, this dual core 1.2 gigahertz processor really screams. I'm going to run some benchmarks a little bit later and show you, but um, just take a look at some of the wallpapers. You can see some of the vivid colors. This display is really, really nice. Let's try this one here. There we go. Let's see what we got in terms of live wallpapers. Some weather based ones, pretty cool. And just because I'm not going to get too much use out of messaging here uh, with this weak signal, I'm going to rearrange things a bit. I'm going to take email and drag it down here. You'll see how it's swapped out. Now from the home screen, I'm always going to have access to email. You can see I've got 13 messages here. Two separate accounts. I have a Gmail account and an AIM account configured. I'm going to go into the combined 
box though, just so you can see how they mesh together in the combined view. I really like that. Look at those in a landscape mode, and you see we have a kind of a tablet-like interface here, which is pretty cool. Multi-touch gestures for zooming, formatted text, all sorts of stuff like that. Same message here, just to a different account. I mean, you're getting close to uh, tablet sizes with the 4.3 inch display, so they've got a little bit of latitude to work with here. It's pretty cool. There's another HTML email. You can switch between the boxes very easily. Here's another HTML message I sent. And let's jump into the Gmail client while we're here. My first time in here. A lot of the same messages. Again, you can see the HTML email that we just looked at on the other mail client. No split pane views like you have on uh, the Samsung email application, though. 